Well, it's after the car show a little ways. Um, I put about 300 more miles on the car and still had a slight oil leak and also I didn't like the way this thing shifted. It just shifted a little hard into gears and I could not get it to stop clacking when I shift into reverse which isn't synchronized. So, uh, confession here. I yanked the motor and trans out because something wasn't right and it needed to be right. What I ended up finding out um, on the transmission was that the spacer that goes behind the hydraulic throwout bearing was wrong, the wrong size and the clutch wasn't fully releasing. Uh, that was my fault. I, uh, I basically measured it wrong. And since uh, we still had the oil leak, it was definitely rear main, um, I changed it out also. And since I had the motor out, I decided I wanted to just double check that it indexed that bell housing right, and I took it to a speed shop and had it professionally indexed. And um, I was off a little bit from tolerance. It wouldn't have caused, caused the shifting problems. I put the motor back in, and uh, before I did that, I actually changed the valley pan and put on the valley pan that had the PCV um, attachment um, right on the valley pan, which you can see. Uh, let's see if I can point it out. It's right, it's right there. So I was able to run uh, for my catch can, which is right there. That's an Elite Engineering catch can. That's a really nice can um, for, the, uh, for the PCV to catch the oil. It's amazing how much oil actually gets in that can, how much goes through this PCV system. And then I also had to kind of redo my bracket for the, uh, for the fuel gauge. I then also had the front end aligned on the car. Uh, I was actually halfway close on the one side, the guy said, um, but pretty far off on the other side for just eyeing it up which was interesting. And then I also put, uh, or had a real exhaust system put on the car. I had bought a Flowmaster um, A-Body kit and put, um, tried to put it on myself. I couldn't get everything to hang right. And being OCD like I am, that would have driven me nuts if the left side didn't match the right side. Uh, so I took it up to an exhaust shop and had them put it on. Uh, it has Flowmaster 40s on it. Absolutely love the sound. The oil's been changed twice. I'm still on non-synthetic. I uh, need to get a few more miles on before I switch over to the synthetic. Um, and I also had pulled all the plugs. All the plugs look really good. Nice light brown color. Everything seems to be burning, burning fine. A couple other confessions on this whole thing. If you noticed on the firewall, there's no more tack adapter there. Basically, my tack was not reading right, and I couldn't figure out why because I used the MSD tack adapter. And nobody in MSD could really tell me this, and nobody else I talked to on um, like LS Tech uh, website and such could tell me why it wasn't reading right. And basically, this um, Atomic LS system puts out the correct voltage for the TAC, which should be a 12 volt square wave. And here I was converting that with, to something else with the, uh, with, the, with the TAC adapter. Took out the TAC adapter and the TAC reads spot on with the handheld, um, handheld computer. The other thing is on my power steering, the return line, which is that big, that big hose, which is a 5 8 hose, I learned that heater hose is not compatible with power steering fluid. And it started seeping out of the hose, just in the middle of the, of the hose, just seeping right through it. So I had to get the right hose for that, change that. And uh, also on fuel line, I didn't know this, but uh, Teflon tape is not what you want to use um, for fuel line connections that need to be sealed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll end up with a sprinkler over a short period of time, which is what I ended up doing. Um, so I've got the right kind of, uh, almost like a pipe dope uh, for the connections, like by the, uh, like by the fuel gauge and stuff, that's a screwing connection. So after all that, put on a few more hundred miles, probably had about 600 miles on it, and I went to have it dyno tuned.
Here's the results of the dyno tune. So the details here at the bottom is uh, max horsepower is 413 horsepower and it's all coming in about 5900 RPM and max torque is 419 and it all comes in about 4200 or so. Uh, and that's at the tires everybody which means that um, you know you factor in loss through the drivetrain and such you're probably looking at you know it's under 500 horse but it's it's knocking on the door 500 horse at the crank which I'm super stoked about. When I took it over they they did a quick dyno pull on it and the way I had it tuned it was at like 395 horse I don't remember the torque um, so they were able to pull you know over 20 horse out of this thing and how they did it was they basically put in a lot of timing at mid-range and wide open throttle and then they fattened it up wide open throttle it was kind of hard for them to tune it with that MSD computer it certainly isn't a real good dyno type tool so what they did was they they hooked up their own O2 sensor on the other bank because there's only one O2 sensor on this MSD setup, and um, they were reading everything from there, basically adjusted things from there. Pretty happy with that, and it sounds pretty awesome.